Since the last elections, Mattarella witnessed and participated in the creation of three cabinets, Conte 1 from 2018 to 2019, Conte 2 from 2019 to 2020, and Mario Draghi's, which is still up as I'm writing this. I have already talked about the way all of these came to be and fell in previous videos, but I will summarize it all in the best of my abilities. Salvini, seeing the great results of the 2019 European elections, called for a motion of no confidence to the Five Star Movement. For for no reason whatsoever in the hopes of making a central-right government with him as prime minister. The problem was that polling scores do not apply to parliamentary seats, and so the right did not have the numbers to govern. When Salvini realized the mess he had caused, he took back his motion of no confidence, which is the equivalent of calling someone a nasty cocksucking bitch and then saying no offense. The Five Star Movement did take offense and kicked Liga's ass out of the coalition, putting the Democratic Party in it instead. A few weeks later, Matteo Renzi, who was not party secretary of PD anymore, but was still a member of it, founded a new party alongside 40 other loyal parliamentarians and called it Italia Viva. He remained in the government coalition, but he now had the numbers to doom the government if there was ever the need. I'm willing to bet actually that Renzi intended to fuck Conte over by the spring of 2020, but then the pandemic happened and so he had to postpone his... Um, penetration. Of course, Italy was one of the first countries to go on lockdown, and many other countries were making fun of us, like France, Germany and the Netherlands, before getting hit arguably harder by the pandemic while we were getting over it. Mattarella's role during these times of hardship were not so crucial politically, but certainly contributed to his popularity. He played as a morale booster in many ways, acting perky and relatable, like when he made a speech on live TV in the middle of the pandemic and a blooper started to spread around where his assistant told him to fix his hair a bit and he was like yeah I know it's messy but I can't go to the barber either. In December 2020 Renzi was feeling hungry, hungry for chaos and decided to put pressure on Conte until he resigned in January 2021. Italy was right in the middle of a second wave of Covid, the economy was wrecked and we needed to make some changes in order to win back our international credibility if there ever was any. Renzi causing the government crisis allowed the nomination of of Mario Draghi to be put in motion, and this was probably one of the best examples of Mattarella's cooperation with the former Prime Minister. Do not get me wrong, Conte and Mattarella did have a good bond too. They were both law professors and Conte has proven time and time again to have great knowledge of Italian history and its institutions. Regardless, I think Mattarella too realized that times were changing and therefore went along with, with Draghi and Renzi's plan. I've talked about Draghi's cabinet too, and while I think the there are some great ministers in there. It is also full of useless air breeders. I will now show you some more. Brunetta, Giorgetti, Cingolani, Carfagna, Duranza, Cartabia, and Germini. All the others are either uninteresting or useless, like Bianchi and Messa. Why do they always put the chair warmers in the more important ministries? Oh, it has been a minute. Let's make a new break. Fast forward to January 2022. It is now time to elect a new president of the Republic. Mattarella made it clear that he did not want to run for a second term, and Draghi, despite his great profile, everyone agreed that he should remain prime minister. Let's introduce the protagonists of this presidential race. No, On the right, we have Matteo Salvini, Silvio Berlusconi, and Giorgia Meloni. I already made a video on her, but I want to redo it in the near future for the same reason as Berlusconi. There are also some other minor party leaders on that front, like Brugnaro and Raffaele Fitto. On the left, we have Enrico Letta, Giuseppe Conte, Matteo Renzi, Roberto Speranza, and Carlo Calenda. Since the right had the relative majority, the coalition leader Salvini thought it would be fair to lead the election process by bringing forward their ultimate candidate, Silvio Berlusconi himself, who would proudly accept the candidacy. Now, Berlusconi is cool and all and, and gives off big Sigma male vibes, but since the president of the republic is also the head of the judiciary, I don't think Berlusconi would fit the role very well, especially since he has countless trials of corruption, tax evasion and minor prostitution. 
constitution still going on. Plus, he's very old and often has health problems. After a long series of meetings, Berlusconi was able to convince all right-wing parliamentarians to vote for him. That's about 450 voters, and to be elected, he needs at least 505. In order to gather the remaining votes, he called for his friend, Vittorio Sgarbi who is an art critic and long-time parliamentarian in the miscellaneous group of the parliament where nobody has any proper party affiliations. The group has never been bigger since most of them are former Five Star Movement members who were kicked out of the party for being conspiracy theorists or low-key extremists. People like Paragone or Cunyal just to name a couple. They have lost so many that the Five Star Movement actually lost the relative majority that they actually had won in the previous election. Berlusconi and Sgarbi decided to work together to find the missing voters among these nut jobs and perhaps among the left coalition. While Sgarbi was initially very pessimistic, it seems that the mission that they originally called the Squirrel Operation was to bring forward great results. Berlusconi started to give away paintings, Rolex, and God knows what else. During a press conference, one one of these parliamentarians, who was formerly from the Five Star Movement, Bianca Granato, told this to the press. Oh yeah, I received a call from Berlusconi earlier. When I picked up, I heard him say, what up girl, it's me, the Bunga Bunga guy. For those who don't know, Bunga Bunga is what Berlusconi and his friends called these sex orgy parties he used to host in the early 2000s. Now, if that isn't based, I don't know what is. Despite all this, just two days before the election, had to withdraw his candidacy due to health complications complications. Leaving the center-right coalition with no official candidate, Salvini then began looking for a compromise by proposing to the left Marcello Pera, Letizia Moratti and Carlo Nordio. If you are wondering who these people are, honestly that's not too important, but if you really want to know, I will label them right here. Pause the video to check it out. Letta and Conte really did not seem ecstatic about any of them, and so Salvini turned up with the name of Elisabetta Casellati. <laughs> current president of the Senate and loyal parliamentarian from Forza Italia. My feelings towards her are mixed, but overall I'd say she's not a bad choice for president. The left however disagreed and, and this got to Salvini's nerves. I was annoyed too initially since I could definitely see Casellati as president and she would have been the first woman to hold such position, so that would be cool. Things however changed when the morning after the left gave the right their own list of recommendations and I have to tell you, they were mostly great. We had people like Giuliana Amato, twice prime minister and current constitutional judge with a long political history where he appeased both the right and the left, and my personal favorite. Then we had Marta Cartabia, another constitutional judge who was now minister of justice. She does not have political experience, but she balances out her conservatism with her attention to social rights. Then we have Pier Ferdinando Cassini a political veteran from the old Christian democracy who has had experience working among the left and the right coalitions. While Salvini's suggestions are respected only in the right, these were the perfect compromises, because actually none of them were particularly left-wing, so that was perfect, any of them could do, but Salvini just could not stand the idea of having to choose a candidate suggested by the left, so he denied all of them and told his parliamentarians to vote for Casellati independently. Chances are that this was a power move to show the other leaders he still had the most votes. But that backfired badly, because out of the 450 people who should have voted for Casellati, only 380 did so, hence dooming Salvini's credibility for good. All this went down from Monday 24th to Friday 28th and the parliament still hosted scrutinies despite the lack of direction of the party secretaries. And so to pass the time that the politicians started shitposting and voting for celebrities, historical figures and porn stars. This was not the first time it had happened. But in a world in the midst of a pandemic, this displays of inadequacy and lack of professionalism resulted offensive to the Italians. Some people even started to flirt with the idea of electing the president of the republic directly and not let the parliament do it. I am personally not, not in favor of changing our government type just because some parliamentarians voted for Antonio Razzi as a joke. <laughs> 
but hey, what do I know? The point is that people were irritated for not being more involved in the election, and so the parties decided to go for the audience's favorite. After looking at numerous polls, it was clear that most people wanted Mattarella to come back, who was actually in the middle of moving from his house in Palermo to a nice apartment in Rome, where he hoped to spend the rest of his retirement. As you can imagine, he was not very pleased when the parties begged them to come back because they could not come up with a proper decision, despite there being many great options around, both in the right and the left. But the election had gone on for too long and there was a need for the parliament to deal with other issues, and so Mattarella accepted the offer and was elected with 759 votes out of the thousand. Guys, I have to admit that I was a bit disappointed over the whole deal. We get one of these elections every 7 years and this one kind of sucked. I am happy he decided to stick around but he really did not have to and uh, it is all Salvini's fault. The reality is that the right wing coalition is in shambles and the only one who seems to have its mind straight is Giorgia Meloni, although that is hardly a blessing. At least she will make things interesting. I'm not sure how long Mattarella will stick around, but I have reason to believe he might run his second term all the way to its organic end, and honestly, that's not too bad. Initially, I was not sure if I should have made this video in the first place, because I told myself I would have done another one of those once his term had run his course and we had gotten a new president, but Mattarella is still there, and honestly, we will be blessed with his presence for many years to come. I honestly think that Mattarella is probably one of the best presidents we ever had, the only one who could rival him is Pertini, however my personal favorite remains Cosica. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I will see you soon with a brand new episode of Italian Politician of the Week next week, I guess. See you then.